The most beautiful places on our planet, known to everyone, may cease to exist in the near future for various reasons over time, the climate and ecology are changing, and people have reached the most hidden corners of our planet, and can affect the usual conditions for these places that have developed over time. Centuries-old period of time. These places may disappear from the face of our planet in the near future, or life there may change dramatically. One of these places is the Galapagos Islands, a group of islands in the east of the equatorial Pacific Ocean, these islands belong to the state of Ecuador, they got their name because of the habitat in these places of a rare species of aquatic turtles called Galapago, these islands are the habitat of about 9,000 species, many of which are found nowhere else in the world. However, the wildlife that makes the Galapagos Islands so unique is currently under serious threat. Over many hundreds of thousands of years on these islands, various species of fauna have adapted to coexist and not interfere with each other, there were practically no predators, but with the advent of humans in these places, life began to change its usual course, rats and other various predators came from ships to the islands, so man brought cattle, goats, pigs and cats to these islands, the population of which began to increase, destroying the indigenous inhabitants, the usual living conditions of local species of birds and animals that had developed over millions of years of evolution, which were not able to adapt so quickly to extreme conditions, began to be disrupted. Also, in recent decades, these islands have been chosen by tourists and divers, which also negatively affects these wild places. The Maldives is also in grave danger. The Republic of Maldives is a state located in the equatorial waters of the Indian Ocean. In total there are about 1,200 coral islets, 202 islands are inhabited, the rest are uninhabited. The origin of the islands is volcanic. The Maldives is famous for its amazing record it has the lowest highest point in the world. Only 2. 4 meters. Due to the low altitude of the land above sea level, the Maldives is seriously threatened by flooding. Scientists give disappointing forecasts on this matter. They believe that due to the melting of glaciers, the water level in the ocean will steadily rise, and this threatens the Maldives with disaster. 80% of the islands rise only 2 meters above sea level. The Maldives are effectively protected from the high waves and storms of the Indian Ocean by barrier reefs and are home to an amazing diversity of marine life. Stunning corals, more than 2,000 species of fish, rare turtles, as well as creatures unique to this region, such as reef and whale sharks, moray eels, stingrays, and many others. And it would be a great pity if their usual living conditions change. By 2030, most of the islands in the Indian and Pacific Oceans will become uninhabitable, scientists and researchers from the U.S. Geological Survey and the University of Hawaii have come to this conclusion. Changes in the water level in the Marshall Islands and the study of geological features have led scientists to a disappointing conclusion the advance of the sea onto land is inevitable, and flooding of the territory of the island states is not the only problem for the coming decades. In addition to flooding of the islands, people will face an acute shortage of drinking water, the amount of which on the islands will be reduced due to global warming. Another place that will disappear from the face of the earth is Venice, a tourist city with its famous canals and gondolas. Venice is gradually sinking underwater and this fact was faced by ancient settlers who were forced to rebuild the city twice, moving to higher points. Throughout the 20th century, Venice sank quite quickly, up to about 5 mm per year, into the water. The main cause of the disaster was the industrial extraction of water from artesian wells and, as a consequence, a decrease in the aquifer of the earth the gradual flooding of the city is also affected by the increasing pressure of ground objects buildings and structures. After the wells were closed, the subsidence of the city slowed down, but did not stop. 
According to scientists, Venice could become uninhabitable as early as 2028, and completely sink by 2100. The gradual destruction of the city is also due to the increased frequency of floods. Throughout the year, the water level changes, stay. Mark Square and some other areas of the historical center of Venice begin to flood more and more often. To save this unique city, the Moes project was developed, which provides for the construction of airtight barriers around the city. The project received the approval of experts and was inaugurated in 2003 with the laying of the first stone by Silvio Berlusconi himself. However, the construction of dams has been subject to serious criticism due to the low effectiveness of such flood protection when the Italian authorities realized this oversight, they intended to carry out additional work, requiring new costs of 100 million euros. But this money was not found. Perhaps the biggest plus is the fact that Venice is built on stilts from Larch, which grows in the Alps, which almost does not rot in water. The Great Barrier Reef in Eastern Australia is the world's largest coral reef. It stretches for 2,500 kilometers, is the world's largest coral reef. The ridge contains more than 2,900 individual coral reefs and about 900 islands in the Coral Sea. It is the largest ecosystem in the world because it is a colony of coral polyps. Global warming poses a threat to the existence of reefs. When the water temperature rises even one degree above normal, the algae living in the polyps die. As a result, whitish areas are formed on the colonies. Two-thirds of the reef has already been bleached. Bleaching is the process by which corals lose the symbiotic algae that give the reef its vibrant colors, and bleaching has already affected 1,500 kilometers of the reef, scientists say. Tropical hurricanes cause enormous damage to the fragile balance of coral reefs. Other natural factors also cause no less harm, including periodic surges in the population of crown of thorns starfish, which feed on coral polyps. Today, coral reefs suffer the most from human activity. Mass tourism also poses a known danger. With the development of tourism infrastructure, coastal sea waters are inevitably polluted. The Great Barrier Reef is home to about 1,500 species of marine fish. The largest fish on Earth, the whale shark, lives here, as well as many species of parrotfish, boxfish, butterfly fish, moray eels, and many others. The waters around the reef are home to several species of whales, as well as many dolphins, including killer whales. The waters around the reef are a breeding area for humpback whales. The South Reef Islands are a breeding ground for sea turtles. Six of the seven species are found in the reef's waters, all of which are endangered. A huge number of crustaceans also live here crabs, shrimp, lobsters, and lobsters. Even a small reef provides shelter to about a hundred different species of shrimp and crabs. There are also a lot of shellfish on the reef. In addition to all kinds of marine life, the Great Barrier Reef provides shelter to more than 240 species of birds. Continental islands are home to huge nesting colonies of birds. Some birds prefer to nest on certain islands. And with changing conditions, many of these representatives of the fauna are doomed. Now scientists fear that there is very little chance for the reef's corals to recover. Also, from the point of view of scientists, the bleaching process threatens the very existence of the reef. The Dead Sea is also on the verge of extinction, an endorheic salt lake between Israel and Jordan. The water level in the Dead Sea is 430 m below sea level and is falling at a rate of approximately 1 m per year. The coast of the lake is the lowest piece of land on Earth and the Dead Sea is one of the saltiest bodies of water on Earth, salinity is 300 to 310 per thousand. Over the last century, the water level has dropped by 25 meters, and the destructive process is only progressing. At the end of the 1980s, a tourist complex was built on the seashore, 
the waves literally hit its walls, and now the establishment had to organize a special train attractor that pulls trailers all the way to the beach, about another two kilometers. It's surprising that we are not talking about a period of time of 500 or 1000 years, just 30 years ago the sea was here, and today we have to catch up with it. In 1977, due to drainage, the sea was divided into two parts, northern and southern. The southern part is under the control of mineralogy plants. The enterprise is mine bromine, potassium chloride, and other minerals. Crystallization of salts occurs through evaporation. For these purposes, the southern part was turned into a system of interconnecting pools. Thus, the natural process of water circulation in the Dead Sea was disrupted. The current situation entails an inevitable environmental disaster. Its first harbingers are clearly noticeable today. The drop in groundwater levels has led to the formation of underground cavities and subsidence of the soil. There are about 1,200 sinkholes in Israel and Jordan, the depth of which sometimes reaches 25 meters. The greatest danger is posed by sinkholes that form along roads and near residential complexes. A case of a sinkhole occurring immediately after a tourist bus passed by was recorded. Luckily, none of the passengers were injured. Until now, three people have become victims of failures. The Amazon forests may also disappear. Over the past 50 years, about 20%, approximately 482,000 kilometers, of the Amazon in Brazil has been deforested. If another 20% of the Amazon is destroyed, this could lead to the death of the entire forest, the forest simply dries up and burns. If this happens, it will not only mean the end of the Amazon as we know it, but also 140 billion tons of carbon will be released into the atmosphere, which will raise the temperature of the entire planet. Forests absorb approximately one-third of fossil fuel emissions, approximately two. Four billion tons of carbon they are removed from the atmosphere every year. Environmentalists blame the rise in deforestation on the easing of sanctions targeting companies involved in infrastructure development, including the construction of dams, highways and railways. The furnaces used to produce charcoal are visible from a police helicopter the people involved in this production are only interested in profit. Also, another reason accelerating deforestation is the ever-increasing production of soybeans and grain crops, for example, a tractor works in a wheat field in what was until recently virgin tropical forest. One of the main reasons for excessive deforestation in the Amazon is also the increase in Brazilian beef exports. It appears that 60 to 70 percent of deforested land is used for cattle ranching, primarily by subsistence farmers. Deforestation in the Amazon is much more than a regional problem. This is a global problem because the Amazon rainforest plays a key role in the Earth's hydrological and climate systems and has a significant impact on the world's climate. The Amazon rainforest covers a significant amount of land and extends across Brazil, Colombia, Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, and Venezuela. And every year it becomes less and less. Well, that's all for today, thank you all for watching, if it was interesting, support the video with likes, thank you for subscribing, and take a look at what else we have prepared for you.